I guess now we just wait. You know, I suppose in some way that this is a kind of story, wouldn't you agree? I'm not quite sure if we're in the destination or the journey. Though they're always saying that life is about the journey and not the destination. Oh, so God. I hope that's where we are right now. We'll find out, won't we? Yeah. Eventually. Yeah. Well, yeah. in the meantime, if you... Oh, no, what? No! <laughs> oh, boy. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. We restarted and the narrator forgot. Son of a bitch. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. All right. Fuck it. Let's let's. Yet there was not a single person here either. Mm -hmm. Feeling okay. a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, <laughs> hoping he might find an answer there. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Coming to a staircase, oh. Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Now there's a choice that I haven't taken. Hmm. But Stanley just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours, he might be fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All oh, of my shit. co-workers blinking mysteriously out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all? None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <laughs> why did doors close automatically behind him wherever he went? And for that matter, these rooms were starting to look pretty familiar. Were they simply repeating? No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion that had been on the tip of his tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. I'm dreaming, he yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, what a relief Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, an explanation. Mm -hmm. His co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. So... He imagined himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then he imagined <laughs> nice. himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and it too appeared. It was so much fun, nice. and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. How was he remaining so lucid? And then perhaps the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything that I'm doing and thinking? Now the voice was describing itself being considered by Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts, he thought. And while he thought it all very odd, and wondered if this voice spoke to all people in their dreams, the truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself, believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself? Stanley is as awake right now as he's ever been in his life. Now, hearing the voice speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not see him float and make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just... He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. Mm -hmm. 
so he closed his eyes gently, and he invited himself to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin, the press of the mattress wake on his up, back, Stanley. the fresh air of a world wake outside up. this one. Let me wake up, he thought to himself. Yes, wake I'm up. I'm through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please, it's all I want. Yeah. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Mm -hmm. Everything will be fine. Right. I am okay. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wake me up. My name is Stanley. I have a boss. I have an office. I am real. Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear my voice? Who am I? Who am I? And everything went black. Oh. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. Oh, why? What? 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 Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this particular day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Oh. And although she would soon turn to go call for an ambulance, for just a few brief moments, she considered the strange man. He was obviously crazy, this much she knew. Everyone knows what crazy people look like. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I am sane. I am in control of my mind. Mm -hmm. I know what is real and what isn't. It was comforting to think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. But then she remembered the meeting she had scheduled for that day, the very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. Restart? Yeah, restart. Okay. Um, definitely do not want any ending hints. From everything I've heard about this game, the fun of it is being confused and discovering things for yourself. So, <laughs> that's what I'm doing. Just a step through this door, Stanley thought to himself, that's all I need. If I can make it through this door, I can make it through them all. What's back this way? Oh, the executive bathroom. Haven't been in here. Money in the morning, money in the evening, money for breakfast. Money, crisp. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, nothing in here, apparently. Oh, 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 this didn't open for me before, did it? No, that's the boss's office. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, let's go up. Let's go up. Oh, oh no, not, not elevator music. Is the elevator not going to stop? Is this just going to keep going with the elevator music? what this is, isn't it?
this this didn't go anywhere oh my The elevator doesn't go anywhere. Okay. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Mm -hmm. Had Stanley mm -hmm. really been under someone's control all this time? Yeah. Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? No. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. It's a pretty His awesome idea if, if it was only temporary, you know. If, if only while you were at work, you, you could, like, I don't know, be exposed to some mind control field that would just make you happy to be there. Everyone would love their job. That, that, that really doesn't sound so bad. Everybody could be happy, no matter what they're doing. Yeah, that sounds pretty cool to me. As long as it's temporary and, you know, they're not keeping you like 80 hours a week. But they would. They would abuse it. It would, it would be abused. You'd never fucking leave work. What if, instead of shutting it off... he found the source of the room's power, he knew it was his duty... His obligation to put an end to this horrible place what and to we, everything it stood for. What if we turned it on? Oh, Stanley, you didn't just activate the controls, did you? Yes, I did. After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is yeah. that what you wanted? Yes. Control? Yes. Oh, Stanley. I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. <laughs> In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, oh. nuclear detonators are set to explode. Oh, my. Eliminating the entire complex. Oh. How long until detonation then? Mm, let's say, um, two minutes. Okay. Ah, now this is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? Oh, yeah. It's your time to shine. You are the star. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy ah. it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. Yep. But what precious moments each one of them is. Yep. More yep. time to talk about you. Yes. About me. Explode. Where we're going. What all this means, I barely know where to start. Explode! What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are? A moment of solace before you're obliterated. Yeah, I mean... All right, I'm in a good mood. They're you're about to be die, atomized. Anyway. I'll tell you exactly what happened to them. <laughs> I erased them. Mm. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, mm -hmm. or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you, it's quite rich. I almost hate to see it go. Mm -hmm. But I'm sure whatever I come up with on the next go around will be even better. Really? Oh, my goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Time doesn't grow on trees. Well, oh, it, it kind of does here. Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing right now? Or did you just assume when you saw that timer that something in this room was capable of turning it off? 
I mean, look at you. Running from button to button, nope. screen to screen, clicking nope. on every Not little thing that. in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will Go save back to me. that five. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea what your purpose in this place mm -hmm. is? <laughs> Stanley. You're in for quite a disappointment. But here's a spoiler for you. Ooh. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. Ooh. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're uh -huh. only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. Ooh, oh, oh this is open me. now. Nice. Ooh. This is not a challenge. It's a tragedy. You wanted to control this world, that's yeah. fine. Uh -huh. But I'm going to destroy it first, so you uh -huh. can't. Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds yeah. until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here. Just you being blown to pieces. Uh -huh. Will you cling desperately to your frail life? Or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice. I mean, I'll let it go, Make sure. It count, or don't. It's all the same to me. Three? All part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from uh -huh. the moment we fade in until the moment I say happily ever up. Okay. <laughs> Here we are again. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. No, he this didn't. This was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. Uh -huh. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just to admire it. Wow. Yes. This room. What a but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. No, he didn't. Stanley was so bad at following directions, it's <laughs> incredible he wasn't five years ago. <laughs> uh huh. Ooh. Do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion will cause death. Penalty for misuse of cargo lift, $1,000. Penalty for jumping off the cargo lift, $5,000. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. Mm -hmm. I'm not your enemy, really. When, when you blew me up, you I mean? realize that investing in your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you all this time. There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Mm -hmm. Someone you've forgotten about. Right. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. Uh-huh. This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. Uh-huh. She's been waiting. Has she? Oh, boy. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. Here we go. Oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. All right. Okay, there we go. All right, now, I want you to come in and tell me all about... your day. <laughs> gotcha. Yep. Oh, come on. Yeah, you did. Did you actually think you had a loving wife? They'd want to commit their life to you. Oh. I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. Oh. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Mm-hmm. This is a very sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. Press M. Oh, no. Stanley is quite a boring fellow. He has a job that demands nothing of him, and every button that he pushes is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. 
Look at him there, pushing buttons, doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Mm -hmm. Now he's mm -hmm. eating lunch. Now he's going home. Now he's coming back to work. Mm -hmm. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. Oh, it won't let me press anything else. But in his mind, Damn. ah, in his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown, fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Mm -hmm. And so he began to fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co-workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly. Mm -hmm. So he went further. He imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either. At last, choice. It mm -hmm. barely even mattered what lay behind each door. The mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold. As he wandered through this fantasy world, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. And down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he called it the Stanley Parable. Game with a baby? It was such a wonderful fantasy. And so in his head, he relived it again. And then again. And again. Over and over. Wishing beyond hope that it would never end. That he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. But there is no answer. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. Mm hmm. And I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world, he can never be anything but an observer. That as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Okay. But... I wonder I'm going to have to it's not going to do it it's just going to sit there looking at me you see can he just not hear me how can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second <clears throat> he remains here he's electing to kill himself how can I get him to see what I see how can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time... And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again, and Stanley pushed a button. And I tried... Okay. Existentialism the game. <laughs>